because if the video hits 10k likes, she will come back. What I have here underneath this trash bag is going to be the new official co-host of Setup Wars starting today. This is what you guys wanted. Just my water bottle. Cue the intro. Working with AI can be a blessing and a curse. I mean, it helps you throughout mundane tasks, but there are so many models now that you don't know which one to use anymore. Why can't we just have them all in one place? Well, now you can, thanks to Chat LLM Teams from Abacus AI. It's your all-in-one command center, giving you access to all the popular models from OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, and many more in a single window. You just need to type your prompt once, and the built-in route LLM will automatically grab the model that answers best, so that way you don't have to play pinball on your browser. And it's not just text-based models. The same goes for AI image and video generation, and all of that for only $10 a month. That's way cheaper than even a single subscription on any of those platforms. All the features you'd wish for, like talking to your PDF documents, coding, research, are all packed into this one single hub. All that horsepower for only $10 a month is an absolute steal. So click my link in the description section or my pinned comment to check it out. Ladies and gents, we're kicking off the year with a very bright setup from the Philippines. It belongs to Argio, a 32-year-old IC designer who put this whole gaming corner together as an after-breakup project. And honestly, that's the right kind of post-breakup arc. Some people cut their hair, some people buy a motorcycle. This man built a gaming bunker under what looks like the bottom half of a bunk bed and then said, cool, but I can do better. The ceilings are very low, it's like you're gaming in a secret compartment, but it works because the lighting wraps the whole space and makes it feel like a dedicated little nook. The outside world can't hurt you in here, only your online rank can. He's running a triple monitor layout. The primary is an MSI 34 inch OLED ultra ride and then we got two 24 inch Acer monitors on the sides in vertical mode. It's clean symmetry, and the wallpaper choice is actually doing a lot for the space. It makes the monitors feel like one continuous scene. However, I would recommend checking your brightness levels and color temperatures, so that way you can match them as closely as possible. The desk surface is also pretty clean. There is a simple riser, a small speaker tucked underneath it, and then an iRock keyboard with the G502X+. When it came to decor, he didn't overdo it, but still gave the space personality. Persona art on the wall, the pegboards loaded with small items, and the collectibles slash figurines to keep it lively. You know, in a space this tight, balance is hard. Too much stuff and it feels cramped. Too little and it feels soulless. Argio here did a pretty good job balancing it all. On the right is where we can find the PC. A build inside the O11 Vision featuring an i9 14900K and a Gigabyte RTX 4080 Aero. We unfortunately didn't get any photos of the cable management, however I do have faith that he didn't cut corners here. I hope at least. You know, for a setup that's built in such limited space, it's cozy and well put together. Great job RGO and thank you for coming on the show. If you try to cram the past, present, and future into one setup and make it look intentional, this is probably what you'd end up with. This one belongs to Brandon, a 35-year-old portrait artist from Canada, and the goal here was simple. Make a space for everything. Video editing, music production, drawing, PC gaming, console gaming, VR, and fitness without it looking like five hobbies fighting for custody of the room. And honestly, I feel like he pulled it off. 
At the centerpiece of the setup, we have three portraits right above it, and Brandon actually drew them himself. On the left is Ed Harris's Man in Black from Westworld. We got Alan Watts in the middle, and on the right is a Chernobyl hazmat suit character. It's an interesting way to divide the setup into three both with the portraits as well as the setups beneath them. On the left, you've got the modern console zone with the big screen, a full-on CRT TV retro area on the right with lots of gaming classics, and the PC station in the middle. It's got a single 32-inch LG monitor flanked by white KRK rocket speakers on top of a custom-built monitor stand. For peripherals, he went with the Nufi keyboard, a SteelSeries mouse, and that thing in the middle is actually the DaVinci Resolve speed editor. It's basically a shortcut panel that makes cutting footage way faster. And the cool part is, it comes bundled with a DaVinci Resolve Studio license. It's by no means necessary to spend this kind of money, especially when you're just starting out. But if you edit a lot and use DaVinci, it's a pretty sweet upgrade. Anyways, back to the setup. I do love how even the storage is themed. Left side glows blue for the modern gear. The right side glows warm orange for the retro hardware, making it a harmonic coexistence of two worlds within one space. The rest of the room is also gorgeously finished and decorated with some guitars, dumbbells, and all of his other gear. I love to see it. Kale management is on the control behind the desk, and he even routed some USB-C cables for easy access underneath the monitor riser. Very nice job. The PC powering the middle setup features a Ryzen 9 5900X and a Gigabyte Aero RTX 4070 Ti. But I'd like to take a step back and appreciate this whole room for a second. It's actually pretty cool to see this. Brandon simply wanted to buy a desk, paint the room, and call it a day. But in the process of learning woodworking, 3D modeling, and PC building, he ended up taking care of all the shelving units, the desk, and anything that could have been custom made fully on his own. This is why I love setups. You start off with an idea, fall in love with the building process, learn new skills, and have the best time of your life putting it all together. Brandon actually documented the whole process on his YouTube channel, so make sure to check it out if you guys are interested. I'll drop a link to it down below. But sick build, Brandon, thank you for sharing this with us. All right, buckle up because up next, we've got a returning subscriber, Brent, who is a 49-year-old business analyst and content creator from New Zealand who built a whole ecosystem inside his basement. And the cool part is he did it all himself. Ripped out the walls, plastered, painted, ran speaker cables through the ceiling and walls, terminated everything with clean wall plates, and all that took him three years to achieve. It might seem like a long time, but like I said during the previous setup, it's all a process. And unless you do stuff like this full time, pulling it off on the side and creating a room with not one, but three different setups with hidden wiring and custom furniture is no easy feat. The first thing you notice is the warm, darker tone with wood textures everywhere. Acoustic panels, laid back lighting, and tons of speakers. Front and center is a massive custom desk built from cut to size bench tops sitting on top of Ikea Alex drawers. The wood desk surface matches the wood accents and the wall panels. Even the chair is in the same earthy tone. It's all very cohesive. For his main setup, he's running a single 32 inch MSI monitor sandwiched by Hakati G5000 speakers on a couple of stands. The only splash of color you see is from his Lord of the Rings themed keyboard, which he paired with the Logitech G Pro Superlight. The PC for the setup is basically a matcha flavored tank. It's built inside the Thermaltake Tower 600, loaded with an Intel Ultra 7 265K and a Strix RTX 3080. If we pan to the left, we'll notice his work from home setup. It's also rocking a single monitor. We got a 27 inch HP with pretty standard peripherals, a GMMK Pro keyboard and a Gravistar M1 mouse. Now this is all powered by a laptop, more specifically the MSI Stealth 14 Studio laptop. Setup number three is the home theater and couch gaming area. We got a massive 75 inch Samsung TV with a crazy audio setup. KEF Q series surround sound system, including in ceiling speakers, a sub all connected to and driven by an Onkyo receiver. I mean, this just screams, I wanna feel the reload animation in my spine. To power this home theater system, he built a dedicated PC, which features a Ryzen 7 700X 3D and an Aorus RTX 4070 Super. 
Separate from all the gaming and work, Brent needed a workstation area as well, because, I mean, three is clearly not enough. He actually built this one right near the entrance. It's a sit and stand desk with pegboards filled with tools, PC parts, and everything you'd need to put together a computer. All in all, with this much gear, you'd expect the wiring to be an absolute nightmare. But Brand did such a clean job hiding most of that. Honestly, the cable management is the biggest flex in the entire room. An absolute spiritual achievement. This is an awe-inducing man cave, filled to the brim with decor, lighting, display cases, and Lord of the Rings collectibles. But what I love most is that it doesn't feel like it was built to impress the internet. It was built to be lived in. Gaming, movies, editing, family time, couch gaming, I mean the whole deal. And with all that custom renovation work, personality, hidden wiring, sheer attention to detail, I have no doubt you are taking home the 77th seal of approval, Brent. Well deserved, my guy. If you're watching this video, hit me up on Discord to claim your plaque and your free tech source mousepad. Next up is the youngest contestant of today's episode, but also a very dedicated one, because Noah is 16 years old. He's a mechanic apprentice from Alberta, and his setup has been a work in progress for eight years. That's wild, as it means he's been obsessed with building his battle station since he was basically a kid and started out like most people do. He got his first pre-built, fell in love with the hobby, and kept upgrading as much as his wallet allowed. He's worked side jobs and hustled his way to what you're seeing now. However, there isn't much left from his old setup. The current arrangement is only a couple months old, but he still has one long-term relic, the Razer Huntsman Gears of War Edition keyboard, which he had for around seven years now. He's running dual 27-inch monitors and a T layout, with an Alienware as the main and a Samsung G5 as the secondary. For peripherals, it looks like he's stuck to a Razer theme with the Huntsman keyboard. We mentioned a Basilisk V3 mouse and a Gigantis XXL mouse pad. If I'm being picky, since both the keyboard and mouse are wired, it would look cleaner if those two cables were routed together so you get a single run instead of two separate lines crossing the desk. Talking about cables, looks like cable management is under control. The wires aren't on the floor and he did keep them tucked away with some cable clips and zip ties. So no complaints here. The PC powering everything is a full AMD build with a Ryzen 5 7600X, an RX 7900 XT, and 32 gigs of Trident Z Royales. Who would have thought that this pair of RAM sticks would cost more than most GPUs out there? Pretty crazy times. I mean, overall, it's a nice setup. However, there are two things I like to question. The first being the decor on the window ledge on top of the bamboo rolling shades. Unless you never use those blinds, that setup is going to get annoying over time when you have to move the plant, the glasses, and the controller every time you want to adjust the shades. I'm really curious what the case is here. And second, the room's dark green wall color. I'm not saying it looks bad, but it does make the space feel darker than it needs to be unless you're intentionally committing to a full green theme. If it's part of a theme, or that's just how the room always was, then I do recommend leaning into it even harder with lighting and matching accents. If not, then adding a bit of more balanced lighting could make the whole area feel brighter without changing the paint. Like I already said, this is a really nice setup with a strong, clean presentation and a pretty good foundation. But I'm really looking forward to seeing how it evolves over time, Noah. Thank you for coming on the show. Last but definitely not least, we've got Raphael, a 17-year-old from Cali with an absolutely mind-blowing modern oriental setup. And on top of that, he's also Armenian. Bottom off for this. Now, before anyone comments, how does a 17-year-old afford this? Well, his parents helped him build a foundation, and then he stacked sponsorships and brand deals through TikTok over the last three years to the point where about 80% of this setup was sent out to him. Whether you love content creation or hate it, that's the reality. If you're consistent, even with just the phone, doors start opening. Now, I will say this for my younger audience that's watching, okay? Content creation isn't some guaranteed stable career path, okay? You should always keep your school as your priority. If you really enjoy or you want to try content creation, you should do that on the side. That way you can kind of get the feel of it. And if you do enjoy it and you got the skills for it, then that's when you should fully commit. But when you start out, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You should try it out on the side. 
Anyways, back to the setup. With those quad displays, it's basically a command center. He's running two 34 inch gigabyte ultra rides and two 32 inch J Link panels, and they're all well mounted, and this creates this giant window effect that makes the whole wall feel alive. And I do gotta give him some extra points for picking the right size displays to create this perfect seamless sandwich. I already know that wasn't easy to do. Paired out with the lighting, with the nano leaf panels up top looking like wings spreading outward, and the setup gives off a futuristic Blade Runner type vibe. The peripherals of choice are an angry meow keyboard. Angry meow? Like, angry cat? I guess it's enthusiast level stuff. And the mouse is a Rokat Burst Pro Air resting on top of a mouse pad with Japanese inspired design. It does fit the whole theme with the katanas perfectly. Talking about peripherals, if you look around the whole room, it feels like a museum of keyboards. He has two tall IKEA pegboards packed with an ever-growing collection of boards and gear. It's actually organized too, which I'm very happy to see. Now the PC itself deserves its own display. It's built in a black Fantex NV7 with an i7-12700K and an EVGA RTX 3090. It's overbuilt, it's clean, and it looks like it belongs in a showroom. I like how the color light panels behind it give this beautiful glow, making the PC pop even more. But what I like most is that none of this feels randomly thrown together. The lighting, the wall decor, the plants, the pegboards, the neon sign with his creator name, I mean it all matches. Even the cable routing is handled properly because most of the mess is hidden behind the desk and ran through channels to blend in with the wall. I mean, this is a ridiculously good way to end the episode. Merci Akbarez for sharing the setup with us. And that is it for the first episode of Setup Wars of 2026. I hope everyone had a fantastic New Year's. Make sure to leave your comment below and vote on your favorite setup from today's episode. If you're happy that there is no co-host, make sure to smack that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one. I mean, technically the water bottle is the co-host.